My name is Rose and this is my daughter Gwen and Gwen is five and in kindergarten. Having small children, um, we end up with vomiting virus, but diarrhea every fall, every flu season. And um, Gwen has had it multiple times uh, because she goes to daycare. Whenever they get sick, it's stressful because we have uh, to lose a day of work most times. My husband and I have to trade out and um, obviously she's not well, so that's also really upsetting. I think the value in this study is understanding um, what kind of virus that affects our kids and um, hopefully that will help them decide on a vaccine that might be able to help us prevent them getting sick. Anything that could prevent this illness and all the time you lose from work and, and all the you know, um, pain they go through is worth it. My hope for this study is that other parents will get involved so we can learn from our kids um, what's going on in the, with, with these viruses and um, we can help prevent this illness. I'm Stephen Friedman, a pediatric emergency medicine physician at the Alberta Children's Hospital. Uh, I'm a member of ACRI, the Alberta Children's Hospital Research Institute and affiliated with the University of Calgary. I'm also the team lead for an AIHS team CREO termed Appetite, the Alberta Provincial Pediatric Enteric Infection Team. Well, it's a really exciting study that many members of our team have been dreaming to be able to do for many years now. We break it into really three different activity levels. So the first thing we're looking at, the first activity, is to understand the burden of disease at a pathogen-specific level. We're trying to understand what bugs or bug is causing vomiting and diarrhea in children. And we're looking at children beyond those who seek care, beyond those who are hospitalized, because we know that 90% of children who are infected or suffering from vomiting and diarrhea never seek actually medical care. So we want to be able to reach out to those children as well and find out what is causing their symptoms, because all these children affect, all these illnesses affect the children, as well as their caregivers, as well as society. Um, and so that's kind of the first activity. The second is really embarking on using novel diagnostic testing approaches, uh, as well as sampling approaches. So traditional sampling is fairly cumbersome with the burden being on the parent and the child. So we give you a little container, we say take this home, collect your child's stool, which is never fun for a parent to do, put it in the fridge overnight, for example, and bring it back to a laboratory the next day, and we'll run some tests that take two or three days to get the results. Now what we're doing actually is we're trying to evaluate testing at the point of care. So by doing swabs of the mouth, uh, rectal swabs, as well as collecting stool, if possible, at the point of care, and then using kind of more advanced molecular approaches that actually have much more rapid turnaround time to be able to sample children before they leave the doctor's office or the emergency department and to be able to provide results in a really timely, efficient manner. The third activity takes all this data that we gather together and then allows us to put together economic models, taking into account parental, child, healthcare provider preferences uh, to create models, to guide policymakers, decision makers as to what the best course of action is on a policy level, particularly as it relates to vaccination, as well as as it relates to diagnostic testing. What should we as a province embark on here in Alberta? Obtaining CREO funding gives us an opportunity to many of my team members to do the studies we've been dreaming of for many years. The ability to sample huge numbers of kids, the ability to run molecular-based diagnostic testing, the ability to sample children with vomiting, um, which we never considered before. We just ignored what was causing vomiting in these children. And while we might not be able to 100% get the answer, we're excited about using our knowledge and our diagnostic approach to try a variety of different modalities to ensure that we can do the best we can to be able to identify the viruses and bacteria causing symptoms in these children. If you're seeking care with your child because your child has vomiting or diarrhea, um, please look out for our study. We will approach people presenting to the, the, the emergency departments in, uh, at Alberta Children's Hospital as well as Stollery. We also have a website that is up and running called gotgastro.ca where there's information if parents are looking to participate and their child is not yet sick. We are actually actively looking to recruit children who are well to provide samples when they do get sick without ever having to seek medical care. Obviously, if your child is sick enough that you think you need to seek medical care, by all means, we always encourage that. But yes, please check out our website. There's lots of information about gastroenteritis, about our research, about our team, and about our study. I really hope that the knowledge we gain from this project will open our eyes to what truly is causing disease. It'll allow us to target those uh, pathogens um, and actually tailor interventions even at two levels, one at a preventive level. So we need to embark on a vaccine program that is the right program based on what is causing disease. Uh, so that's number one. And number two, I think each child, when they are sick, deserves 
treatment based on what is causing their disease. This is kind of the first step in personalized care for kids with vomiting and diarrhea, which we can then perhaps say, I can give this to you to shorten your child's diarrhea from five days to two and a half days.